Good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Well then, so why don't we just take a few minutes and everybody say good morning. Why don't we just everybody get up and say good morning, say hello to somebody, shake someone's hand you didn't shake on the way in, and we'll just keep doing what we're already doing. <laughs> everybody up, shake a hand. <laughs> yeah, everybody say good morning. Greetings. Greetings. Good morning. Happy Father's Day. You know, that's when you feel like you're in charge. You know, that's what I always do. Look, Go ahead. Doing yeah, do what you're doing right now. <laughs> Praise the Lord, everybody. Try again, I know. So first, uh, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. That's right. Round them up. <laughs> so happy Father's Day to all the fathers in the house. Uh, you know, we appreciate all that you do. I'm sure your families are hopefully showing, showering their appreciation on all of the fathers this morning. Um, and um, as I was thinking about Father's Day, I thought, you know, the one thing in our lives that influence our relationship with our Heavenly Father the most is our relationships with our earthly fathers. And some of us get great, wonderful, generous, kind, supportive, loving, godly fathers. And some of us don't even have a father. Some of us don't even know who our father was. And so we carry that with us, whether we realize it or not, into our relationship with our Heavenly Father. But he gives us promises, right? He's a father to the fatherless and a defender of the widows in his holy dwelling. And he sets the lonely in families. The Lord protects the strangers. He supports the fatherless and the widow, and he thwarts the way of the wicked. And not only that, but he's adopted us into his family. If you've not received a spirit of slavery leading to fear again, but you have received a spirit of adoption as sons by which we cry out, Abba, Father. He has adopted us into his family. And there's a song that says, if you're looking at the storm, you're going to wonder if I loved you. But if you're looking at the cross, you know I always have and I always will. What are we looking at? Are we looking at our relationships with our earthly fathers? 
when we look into the cross of Jesus Christ where our Father laid down his own life for us. So if you question the storms are raging, and if you're looking at that storm, you're wondering, where is God? Look to the cross, and you'll know that he lives in us. He never leaves us. He never forsakes us. He has promised that we are forever one in him. And so I just want to encourage you guys to, if you have an earthly father, be thankful. If you don't, be thankful for your heavenly father. Right. And regardless, be thankful for your heavenly father. We are one family and one mind and one accord as we gather today. God bless you all in Jesus' name. Does anybody have any prayer requests or testimonies they'd like to share? Anybody? Yes, Ron. Thank you guys for this morning. Yes. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. the benefits when we get God, adopted into God's family, we get each other. Yes. We are brothers and sisters in arms, brothers and sisters through thick and thin. Yes, yes this is the blessing of being in the church. Anyone else? It's Sheila. Haley and Caitlin. Haley and Caitlin. Okay, Haley and Caitlin. All right, well, let's stand and go. To, oh, yeah, Tim.
for each and every one of us, Alan, yeah. yeah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. All right, let's stand and go to the Lord this morning. Heavenly Father, we love you, Lord. We thank you that you are a good, good Father, Lord. We thank you that you have adopted all of us into your family, Lord. As we lift these needs up before you, to speak them together in this body, Lord. We thank you. We thank you for the testimony that comes by trusting in the the grace and mercy that flows through your sacrifice, Lord Jesus. Help us to keep our eyes focused on the finished work, Lord, that you have given us freely, Lord. Be with us this morning, Lord. Be a part of the service, Lord. As we come to worship and lift you up, Lord. As we listen and receive the word this morning. Jesus, and we ask you to bless the fathers here this morning, Lord. We speak a blessing, Lord, of strength, Lord, of wisdom, Lord, of provision, Lord, for every father here today, Lord, who has a heart for you, Lord. Just a reminder that if you brought a cell phone, please silence them or turn them off. And again, happy Father's Day to all of the fathers in the room. All right. And uh, all right. Uh, can Toby and Don, would you two like to come take the offering? Don, come take the offering, please. <laughs> Sorry. I am going to go too, I do, I do mumble sometimes. <laughs> Toby, Toby, do you want to ask the blessing? <laughs>
your presence, oh God. We know that you're healing in this room right now, Lord. You're healing people in this room right now. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for your love and care for everyone in this room right now. You're touching lives in this room right now. You're showing your love. You're showing your love, Lord. Bless the healing in my life. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Lord, we know that the church and all around the world is in need of your touch.
God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And I'll just speak for myself first. Be it unto me even as you have spoken. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Whatever the Lord is speaking to you this morning, receive it in Jesus' name. Just believe. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Nothing is impossible with God. Hallelujah. And he wants to prove himself mighty to each and every one of us. Hallelujah. If you can believe it, you've already got it. Praise the Lord. Give the Lord a big hand this morning. Praise God. Thank the Lord. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, worship team. Great, great job of leading us into the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. God is good. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Sunday school, young people, you can be dismissed. Praise God. Again, I want to thank everybody that was able to make it to the uh, picnic. I think we ended up with 30 people or 30 humans. Some were adults, some were little, some were, they were all people, but you know, I'm just saying. But we had a good time, and uh, in spite of the heat, the wind was so outrageously strong that it kept us from dehydrating and almost blew us away, but praise the Lord, we're, we're still here, amen. And, and we did have a good time. It was nice to be able to get together and just have some conversation, and <clears throat> if I didn't have a conversation with you, it's because I was talking to somebody else, praise the Lord. <laughs> the way it went, praise God. But it was fun. It was great having everybody, and we're hoping that maybe this fall, as it, after it cools down a little bit, we'll, we'll have another get-together and just kind of an informal thing and maybe roast some brats or hot dogs or whatever and do it again, praise the Lord in a little more hopefully comfortable setting. But it, was, it, was, it really wasn't bad. For those of you that were there, you know, I mean, because of the wind, it, it kind of kept the humidity from overwhelming us. And, and we had shade. And thanks to Suzanne and Mike, they brought a, a big uh, awning or tent affair. And uh, in spite of me, Mike got it put up. Praise the Lord. And uh, so we had, a, we had a good time. There was plenty of shade there. And, of course, we got a lot of shade trees and stuff, too. So it was fun. Praise God. So. Thank you all for being there and being part of it. And this morning, happy Father's Day to everybody. And I'm kind of just trying to figure out where I'm going here. Praise God. Uh, you don't have to go here, uh, Sheila. I'm just going to read this. Uh, but in, in Zechariah chapter 4, and this is a familiar scripture. We've all heard it before, and it's been preached and so forth. But the scripture says that... Uh, he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. And let me just kind of paraphrase this. This is Jesus of the Lord to Zerubbabel, not by might, not by power, but by my spirit. Who art thou, O great mountain, before Zerubbabel? Thou shalt become a plain, and he shall spring forth the headstone, or translated the cornerstone. He will spring forth with shouts, crying grace unto it. Praise the Lord. This is not human strength. He said, uh, you know, another place it talks about this. Your spirit is the candle of the Lord, and we're led by that, a light to our path, a lamp to our feet. But here he says, this is Jesus, and it's not by human strength, but it's by revelation of God's word that we can speak to mountains and declare grace in the face of any obstacle, in the face of any situation or circumstance. 
So it's Father's Day, and I want to talk to you about this in a kind of convoluted way, which is the only way I know how to talk, praise the Lord. <laughs> but uh, So let's go to John, uh, the book of John, chapter 17, and we'll read verses 13 through 23, which is part of this, the song that was sung just before this last one. It's actually verses from that uh, psalm that, or from that scripture that were in the song. So John chapter 17, verses uh, 13 through 23. And now come I to thee, and these things I speak in the world, that they might have my joy fulfilled in themselves. I've given them thy word, and the word hath hated, er, and the world hath hated them, because they are not of the world even as I am not of the world. I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but that thou shouldest keep them from the evil. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. And for their sakes I sanctify myself, that they also might be sanctified through the truth. Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word, that they all may be one as thou, Father, art in me and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me, and the glory which thou gavest me I have given them, that they may be one even as we are one, I in them, thou in me, that they may be made perfect in one and that the world may know that thou hast sent me and hast loved them as thou hast loved me. Praise the Lord. Now, 1 John chapter 5 and verse 4. 1 John 5 and 4. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. So, God is a spirit. You are a spirit. You are born of God. He is your father. We say heavenly father, but the truth is he's just your father. Praise the Lord. You live in your body, but you're born of God, in God's image, in his likeness. And that's because you were created as a spirit. Your body is just the house that you live in, while we're here on this planet, in this world where we don't belong, but we're here anyhow. Praise the Lord. After we were born again, you became reconnected to your Father, to God. We are made to walk just like God, by faith and not by sight. How many of you believe you were born from above? That's what the scripture says, born of God. Amen. Praise the Lord. He is your father. He's more your father than any earthly father could ever be because he's an eternal father. Before the foundation of the world, he was your father. He just reconnected us through Jesus Christ. So you're made to walk just like your father. You're made to walk like God by faith and not by sight. We talk about all these scriptures, church, but it's time that we identify not only that he is our father, but we have to be like our Father. That's the, that was the reason for being born again, so we could operate like God. Praise the Lord. We're made to talk just like God, calling things that are not as though they were. We're made to see just like God, looking not at things that are seen, but at the things that are not seen. Praise God. And we're also made to think like God. We have the mind of Christ. All right, look at Isaiah 55, verses 8 and 9. We all want revival. We want reformation. We want awakening. We, whatever adjective you want to use to describe it. What we really want is to operate in our true identity. Because if we ever do this, you'll have more revival than you know what to do with. 
Praise the Lord. We, we, we can't produce revival out of, an, uh, out of a want to. You produce revival out of walking in who you have been revived to be. Who have you, You've been raised again. Amen. You've been born again so that you can operate in the power and the authority of your Father. Yes. Praise God. So, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. <coughs> Praise the Lord. So that's not possible in the natural. But we're born again. We, he is our Father. So we're to put on the mind of Christ. How do you do that? By renewing your mind to what God says instead of what everybody else is saying or what you might be thinking. So John chapter 16, verses 12 through 15. John 16, verses 12 through 15. And this isn't pie, you know, pie in the sky. This isn't just, you know, like, wow, wouldn't it be great if this were possible? This is the reality. And just because we're not doing it doesn't make it re not real. I have, not, I have yet many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. Howbeit when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he'll guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine, and shall show it unto you. All things that the Father hath are mine, therefore said I, that he shall take of mine, and shall show it unto you. Everything. God, God wants us to experience everything. He gave us the Holy Spirit so that we could know all things, so that we would think on a higher level, so we would think the way God thinks instead of the way we've been thinking. Yes. Amen. He gave us the Holy Spirit so we could do what Isaiah 55, 8 and 9 says. That's really talking about unredeemed, unregenerated people, not those of us that are born again. We can thank God's thoughts because we have the, 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 the Spirit of God in us. Yes. And He only thinks like God. Yes. You were born out of the womb of the Holy Spirit. Yes. You were born of God and created in Christ Jesus for good works that he ordained before the foundation of the world. There's stuff in you, amen, that's been there, amen, since, since God spoke this into existence yes. and before. Yes. Yes. Works that you can only do through God's ability. Yes. Not by somebody laying hands on you, not by somebody anointing you. You've got the anointing. The anointed one is in you. You and the anointed are one. Yes. John 16, verse 33. I'm telling you, this, this is going to happen. People are going to walk in this because God has foreordained it. God has declared it to be, so it has to come to pass. It's just a question of who's going to bite into this, who's going who's to latch on to it and hold on to it and walk in it and, and take some risks. A lot of times we don't pray because we're afraid the prayer won't get answered and then we'll be embarrassed. It's not my responsibility, it's God's. And my responsibility is just to agree with God. These things I have spoken unto you, that in me you might have peace. In the world, you're going to have tribulation. Ask Tammy and Dan. Yeah. Ask anybody over the age of three. Yeah. Stuff happens. Yeah. We don't like it. It's part of this world that we are not of. We're in it, but we're not of it. But as long as we're in it, there'll be tribulation. But we can be of good cheer. Yeah. He overcame the world. Yeah. Praise God. He has overcome the world. Yeah. Amen. Our faith is the first thing that the enemy wants to steal. Yes. And he does it by coming against the word of God. Yes. Well, it can't happen for you. Well, it might have happened for Smith Wigglesworth. It might have happened for uh, Amy Semple McPherson, some great you know, name that we've all heard of, but not for you. Look, those people had nothing more than what we have. Right. They just walked in a different level of belief. They just believed that it was possible, and they walked in it. Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. Without faith, 
we are limited to Satan's world. We're limited to his control. He is the God, little g, of this world. Even though he's defeated, the only way he stays defeated in, our, in the kingdom of God is if we keep our feet on his head. Yes. Praise the Lord. So he, if, if we're not operating in faith, we're limited to what the world can give you, to what Satan has control of. Scripture says it like this, such as is common to man. Yeah. Natural. Yeah. You can't dominate him with information. He's got access to all the information that there ever was. Now, the devil's not stupid. He just doesn't have revelation. He's got, all, he's got way more information than any of us have got, believe me. That's why you cannot fight him in the intellect. You can't fight him in the flesh. He'll beat you every time. As they like to say, he'll steal your lunch and then pop the bag. He's just got way more information than any of us. So we have to have revelation. That's this right here. By the Holy Spirit. Satan has to operate in the natural because he's a fallen spirit. We think, oh, he's supernatural. He, can, he doesn't operate in the supernatural. His power is in the natural. In keeping us carnally minded. Naturally thinking. Sense realm. That's where he dominates. A symptom. A bank of report. Uh, you know, a negative vibe from some other person that says this or that or the other thing and what's going to happen and what's always happening and what will potentially happen for you because it always happens for everybody else. I don't care what's happened to anybody else. I don't care how many people didn't get healed. We still pray yes. for people to be healed because that's what God said we're to do. Yes. Praise the Lord. I don't, I don't know, I don't need to have all the information about why this or that or the other thing. I just need the revelation that by his stripes we were healed and walk in that and see what God will do. We are raised in the spirit. He is a fallen spirit. We've been raised up above him. He cannot go to the throne of God anymore. But we're seated at the throne of God. In heavenly places, we have direct access to God Almighty by His grace. Yes. Yes. We've got to operate, though, in faith and not fear. Because fear is the antithesis. It's, it's the opposite. It's the thing that will keep faith from actually operating in your life. That's why it comes to steal, kill, and to destroy. What, all of those are related to something that's fearful. So you got cancer, you know, you got this, you got the, you're going you're gonna to lose everything. This is going to happen. That's going to happen. You're, gonna, you're too old for this. All of those things are come to get, to cause us to focus on that yes. instead of focusing on what God has promised. Yes. Yes. And I can't, listen, I'm not perfect. At this. I catch myself doing, we were talking at the picnic and I, I, I even said some things that I regretted immediately. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I wasn't that. That stuff I'm not going to talk about, but I'm talking about something else. <laughs> I'm talking about my age and, you know, what, you know, I put in, one day I, I worked like 16 hours, okay? I was mowing here. I was mowing at home. I was cutting some trees and stuff. And I, and I was confessing some stuff I didn't need to be confessing. That, you know, I can't do what I used to do. I did. It takes me longer. I feel it more afterwards. But you see what I'm saying? It's so easy to get caught into that where we start saying stuff that just because that's what the world says, that that's the way it has to be. I'm not denying that, you know, you get tired, that things happen. But, hey, I, I just said, I'm, I, I've made up my mind. I'm just going to do it until I can't do it, till God just doesn't let me do it anymore or till I go on to be with the Lord. I'm not letting those natural things dominate me and tell me what I can and cannot do. Praise the Lord. Today, you know, the world that we're in, terrorism, violent crime, another shooting just yesterday, two, two young men killed. Don't know any of the circumstances, don't know what it's about, but there's two young guys that are dead, that should not be dead. 
but because of craziness and just unconnected from God, and the, the environment that we live in now is just, you know, I mean, it's all screwed up. Greed, terrorism, disease, poverty, even the weather, corruption, oppression. You see it everywhere. And it's easy to get so overwhelmed by it that you just think, God, I'm, just so, you know, I'm just so sick of this. Yeah. I just hate this, you know. Now, let me tell you something. God knew exactly when we were going to be born. And he knew it before the foundation of the world. Now, you say, well, that's just, I mean, come on. All these millions and billions of people that are, God knew exactly. He chose the time for you to enter into this world, for you to be here. Amen. So we are here for such a time as this. Not an accident. God, not like God didn't know what it was going to be like when we're living here. He chose us for a time such as this because he knew we could handle it, amen, if we would just keep the focus on him and not on everything that's going on around us. Praise the Lord. I'm not saying we should just turn a blind eye to all the, the bad things. I'm just saying we have some authority that we should be exercising instead of being freaked out and frightened and intimidated by all of it. We should be doing what God put us here at this particular time to do. Praise the Lord. Genesis 1.1, 1, 1. Oh, I, I, you, you don't have to go there, Sheila, but it's just, you know, in the beginning was God. Yeah. Amen. Uh, everything was without form and void. And God spoke, yeah. right? God said, let there be light. God said, God said, God said over and over and over. And everything God said happened. We are to say exactly what the word of God says. Say, well, that's complicated. No, it's, it's really easier than having to think through everything and try to reason it and resolve all the issues. Just say what God said. Simplify everything. All right, John 1, uh, John 1, 1 through 4. John 1, 1 through 4. God said, and God said, and God said how it started. Praise the Lord. That's how it's supposed to be right this day. That's how it will be all the way through till the Lord takes us out of here. Hallelujah. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. Same was in the beginning with God. All things that were made, all things were made by Him. By who? The Word. And without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life and the life was the light of men. In other words, everything happens by the word, by words being spoken, right? And in him was what? Life. In him was the ability to produce everything that he said. Life. And the life was what? The revelation to man. That this is how you live. This is how you're supposed to live. Adam was given dominion. He blew it. Jesus comes and reestablishes that dominion for us by having us born again. Born in the likeness, in the image of our Father. So this is, I mean, it's just weird how, you know, we, we understand that we were born again, that he is our Father, and yet we, we're acting like we're aliens to him. Because, see, un, 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 you know, unsaved people are alienated from God. They're aliens. Not that God wants them to be aliens. He wants them to become sons and daughters. But they are aliens. They're, they're not only in this world, they're of this world. Jesus said it to the religious people. He said, look, if you, if you believe Moses, you believe me. But you don't believe me. You believe the devil because he's your father. And you say what he says and you'll do what he does. The God of this world. He's, he's not our God. Our father has given us his likeness, his, his spirit, so that we can operate the way he does, so we can say his words and do what he does. Uh, verse 14, same chapter. The word became flesh and dwelt among us. We beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Now Jesus said, I only say what I hear my father say. Yeah. Every bit of inheritance 
every bit of provision, every bit of healing, it all comes from God. And they come by faith from the inside out. Because God is not off in some netherworld or some faraway planet or some place called heaven. Now, he is, but we also know that it's right here. He's in us because God is everywhere. But the fullness of the Godhead dwells in each one of us. Don't ask me how that works. I just, I just know that's what the scripture says. Praise the Lord. So they come by faith from the inside out. They come from God through your spirit. We are designed to operate like God. How does God operate? He spoke, and it became. He speaks, and it becomes. Where was it before? It manifested in God. Whatever it is you're speaking relative to the promises of God, it's already in you. Because it's in God. And God is in you. It works the same way. It's still God, but it's God in you. And you agreeing with that word that makes it come to pass. That's all, that's all Jesus was doing. He was a man. Yes. Filled with the Spirit. He didn't operate as God. He operated as a man filled with the Spirit of God. Yes. Showing us how we are supposed to live this life. Not as aliens, but as children of God. And we look at Jesus and say, well, yeah, but he was perfect. Man, read the Bible. You are the righteousness of God in Christ. There is no sin. He, he will not see or find or accept anything of, about you except perfection. Yes. Or sins and their, their uh, weaknesses and so on and so forth. I will not see. I will not remember. I will not acknowledge. Yes. Praise God. Mark 9, verse 23. See, we're, we're waiting for some great evangelist or some next movement. And I'm telling you, it's right in you. It's right in you, in me. And, and unless we do this, we'll still be waiting when the next generation passes away. Because God's not going to do another thing. He's waiting for us to step out and do what it is he's already given us to do so that this thing can get wrapped up the way it's supposed to get wrapped up and we can get the world saved or at least everybody that's going to be saved, amen, can come to Christ. And then the kingdom of God is going to rule everywhere. Right now the kingdom of God is in you. And right now the kingdom only rules where you rule. Amen. It's like Abram. He said, wherever you set your foot, that's yours. Okay, wherever we go in agreement with the fact that we are the children of God, then the kingdom exists there. And there is no other kingdom, I don't care who it is or what it is, that can prevail over the kingdom of God. So Jesus said unto him, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. Okay, how do you believe? See, the mind only believes what it can see. We got to quit trying to get, you know, so you got an IQ that's higher than somebody else's. That's not going to help you in this. In fact, it will probably be a hindrance. Because the more you try to rationalize and the more you try to reason and, and think through it, the more confounding it becomes. Because it's not for your mental assent, it's for your spirit. That's why we feel things that don't make any sense. And then we sit around and think about it until the feeling or the the resonance of God's spirit in us begins to calm back down. And then we go, oh, well, so, you know, it was just that song. Or it was just what somebody said or prayed, right? The head is not designed to see the invisible. Somebody say, praise the Lord. The spirit is. Praise God. The head feeds off the senses. That's why the carnal mind is enmity with God. Why? Because it feeds totally off of the senses. What it can see, what it can hear. Taste, touch, smell. Your spirit feeds off the word of God. Praise the Lord. Whatever the word says, 
your spirit receives it. That's why I don't know if you've ever done this, but you get depressed or get into a funk or, you know, got some issue going on. You go to the scripture and start reading Psalms or pick a something anywhere, and all of a sudden things, nothing's changed in the natural, but all of a sudden you, you're thinking different. You're feeling different. It's not as overpowering as it might have been before. It's not as oppressive. It's not as intimidating. Why? Because your spirit is, is, is expanding. Your spirit is resonating with the word of God. It's saying, this is right. This is true. This is true. No matter what you're seeing, no, this is still right. This is still true. This is still the reality. Hallelujah. John 11, uh, 21 through 25. You know, I think the time for just preaching to get people excited, I'm not against that, and you know, sometimes I've done it, but I'm trying to teach because basically that's what Jesus did. Because we need some revelation. We need to get this so down into us, not excited for 20 minutes or a half hour or 45 minutes and then walk out and fall right back into the same old ruts and the same old traps that we've been falling into for years, but Get some revelation so that when we walk out of here, we're carrying this reality with us and we're not drifting back and forth. See, we're, we, we are kingdom people. And the, the Lord even says, a kingdom divided can't stand. So if, if you're a kingdom person and you have the kingdom of God in you, but you continuously deviate or, or fluctuate between the kingdoms of this world and the kingdom of God, you're not getting anywhere. You can know, but it won't change anything. A house divided falls. So then said Martha and Jesus, Lord, if you'd been here, my brother wouldn't have died. But I know even now, whatsoever you ask of God, God will give it to you. Jesus said unto her, your brother shall rise again. And Martha said unto him, I know he'll, he'll rise again in the resurrection, the last day. And Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. So Martha knew about the resurrection. It was common, commonly understood in that day. That's one of the issues between the Sadducees and the Pharisees. They bickered all the time over, is there a resurrection? Will, will, will there be a resurrection or won't there be a resurrection? That was one of the reasons they were at odds with each other all the time. But she was looking at the immediate situation, the natural situation that was before her right at that moment. And there was a disconnect from the word, from Jesus, and her natural mind or her natural way of thinking. Now to her, we'll give her credit here, she didn't have the Holy Spirit. So it wasn't like it was going to connect with her spirit, but her mind was disconnected from the word of God. She wasn't getting any revelation from this. This was just more information. She's saying, I already know this. And yeah, when everything's over, yeah, he'll be raised again like everybody else will that's a believer. And Jesus said, you're not, you're not hearing me, Martha. I am that resurrection. Now she's thinking, well, he's been dead for four days. He's rotting in there. He, he's already deteriorating. His body is already breaking down. Of course, the, the language they use is he stinks. All right, look at John eleven twenty five 25 again. It's still up here. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. So what Jesus was really saying to Martha was what God said to Moses back in Exodus. I am. Who, who do I tell him sent me? Tell him I am sent you. What's, he, what's Jesus saying? She's talking about the last day. Jesus is saying, I am. There's no future. There's no past. There's just now with God. He's outside of time. Outside of time. It's hard for us to understand because everything for us is a timeline from the moment we're born all through life. Everything is just a, you know, a linear timeline. This happens, then this happens, then this happens. God's not that way. See, so, I, trying to reason this out does make any sense because I can't, I can't think outside of time. But my spirit exists 
even though it's in time, it exists beyond time. Though this outward man perish, the inner man, he's renewed every day. He's the same thing every day. I've got a theory, and it's just a theory, but I think in heaven everybody's 30 years old. Just my thought. Well, you know why? Because I can't get past 30. I'm 69, but my head's still 30. My mind is still 30. I mean, how many of you know this past 30? That You just really never get beyond that. I'm not saying you don't gain some knowledge or some wisdom, but you think of yourself physically, or I do anyway, like I'm still 30 years old. Thank God I'm not, because 30 wasn't a great year for me. <laughs> I got to tell you. Uh, but, but I'm just saying, you know, get old in your head. Until maybe dementia or something like that. But I'm just saying, normally we don't think. I look in the mirror and I'm, I'm just like you. Who is, who is that? <laughs> what, what in the world happened to you, man? I mean, get yourself together. It's that old Paul Simon song. How long are you going to wear this body down? <laughs> Praise the Lord, man. You don't know you can do what you've been doing. Praise the Lord. But I'm just saying, it, it's just as old looking to me as it is to you. Does that make sense? Praise the Lord. I mean, gray and all this other stuff. And the, Somebody asked me at one of my, at a funeral one time, well, how, what do you grow the beard for? And I said, to cover the wrinkles. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So, anyway, when you're dealing with faith, you come out of time. You come outside of time, and you come into the, inter into the eternal. That's because it happens in the spirit. We were in Christ, I said before, before the foundation of the world. We existed before there was any time, before God spoke this stuff in. Martha was looking at time. Four days. It's too late for anything. He's rotting away. He's already decaying. It's too late. But when you walk by faith, you've got dominion over time. You say, no, you're just, now you're getting crazy. I'm telling you, that's what the Bible teaches. How, you say, why, how, then why is that? I'll tell you why. Because in this world, in this time element, in this time, space, continuum, whatever you, however you want to define it, there are natural laws. And all a miracle is, all the supernatural is, is a suspension of that law. How do you suspend that law? By getting out of the time realm that that law exists in. So, that's just the simplest way that I can say it is that that's why you, you, can't, you can't operate in time because you're bound by it. Your flesh is, but your spirit isn't. It's eternal. So you have to operate by the spirit, which means you've got to operate by faith. The only way you can do that is by getting your mind to agree with what the word of God says. Even if it questions, it's all right. It's not the end of the world. You act on that reality even if your mind doesn't want to go along with it. That's walking in the spirit. And that is where t you have now dominion over time. You can control the laws. Because there is a greater law from Christ. The law of love. The love of God. It's not just me loving everybody else, it's me acknowledging God's love for me. If I understand how much God loves me, then I know everything that I have need of, He's trying to get it to me. Yes. He's trying to provide it for me, just like you would for your children. If you had everything that, that they needed, you'd give it to them. You know what I'm saying? If your kid's hungry, you're going to feed them. That's what he's talking about. If, they, if, they, if they're asking for bread, you're going to give them a snake or a scorpion or a spider or something? No, you'll give them the bread if you've got bread. Yes. Praise the Lord. 2 Peter uh, 1 and 3. See, if we ever get our minds renewed... 
to agree with our spirit, you can make this thing do anything you want it to. Yes. Now, that's, all, that's proven scientifically because people that are, you know, they, they've had little kids lift a car off of somebody. You have no idea what you're capable of doing. Amen? If you just weren't thinking, I can't do this. Now, I'm not suggesting you go out there and try to pick up my truck, you know, but I'm just saying it's happened. It's, it's, it, it's, uh, it's established. It's, it's a reality. Please talk about it all the time. Uh, rescue workers will say, you know, things just, it's unbelievable. Ten-year-old kid lifts a car, drags his dad out from under it, or somebody helps him by dragging it out. It's impossible. You can't lift 2,000 pounds. He did. He defied a law of gravity. He wasn't operating in time. He wasn't thinking and working out the math on this thing about how much, you know, leverage it's going to take to shift that weight to a place where I can actually manipulate it, you know, with. No, he just picked it up. According as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue. His divine power hath given, past tense, hath given unto us all things that pertain to life, to natural, and spirit. Everything. We've got it all. He's already given us all things. And that means that nothing has been left out. God is ready to take you further, much further than your natural mind can even imagine. He wants to do exceeding abundantly above all you can ask or think. He wants to take you to a place that you haven't even imagined in your wildest dreams that you could go to. He wants you to experience things that you're, you haven't even had the courage to even dream about. Because it isn't about your mind. It's about your spirit. We are led by the spirit, not our intellect. So you, I mean, you've got to understand the promises of God with your spirit. You can't understand them with your mind because you, you always want to make equations. Well, that might work for so-and-so because he's really spiritual and he prays more than anybody else or they, she does this or he does that. It doesn't work that way. It works by the spirit. Any of you that were at our place and, and were in the house, I'm not saying this for any reason other than this is just how we live. You can ask Sally. We didn't put stuff up on the wall for everybody to see that, wow, that's what they do. It's just there. Anybody that's been there before knows that's just that's the, how we live. That's how we think. The scriptures on the mirror in the bathroom, the, you know, uh, scriptures that, that cause us to have faith. Constant reminders, always there before us. Now, that doesn't mean we don't have issues. Sally does every once in a while. I don't know. I mean, we're people like everybody else, but that's how we live. We live with a constant reminder of what God's Word is saying about it because, look, we've got the same issues everybody else does. We've got the same stuff come against us that comes against you. But we believe God, and i got to tell you, it works because God provides our needs. He supplies it. We're grateful to the people that give. But listen, that's God's way of blessing you and blessing us. But we're not, you don't hear us going on and on about tithing this and that and the other thing. We're grateful. But we trust the Lord. Yes. Praise God. Yes. I believe in tithing. We tithe. But that's not my message. I'm just saying. We're not judging people by what they give or don't give or can give or can't give. We're, just, we're trusting God. Because his situations don't change. The, the finances in heaven, don't, they don't fluctuate. Praise the Lord. I don't want anybody to ever feel embarrassed or, you know, disheartened or something because you can't give as much as somebody else gives or, or, or you can only do it a certain way or another. Look, you just, you just trust God. 
That's all that matters for any of us. He's bigger than all of that. Our, see, you've got to receive this by the Spirit because our minds are too small and the promises are too big. You look at the promise and you, try, and you start rationalizing, and I mean, you can't do it because you know too much about the situation. You've got too much information and not enough revelation. Hebrews chapter 10, verses 35 and 36. And I got to tell you, most of what, the way we live, that's just us. That's, uh, that's how we are. I mean, I, I said that before, when you come out there, anybody that was there knows, okay, this is not a palatial estate. It's just a house, you know. It's how we are. That's how we live. And we're happy. God blessed us there, and we're, and we're content. It's, it's, who, it's, it's us. It's just how we are. And what I'm saying is, when you trust God, he'll, he'll not only give you, but he'll make you at home in you. You know, like George Bush used to say, you know, or they'd say about him, he's comfortable in his own skin. That's harder than you might imagine. But we're, 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 get, we're, that, we're that's how we are. We're, we're comfortable this way. I mean, this is, our, this is the way we live, okay? We don't have to prove anything. We don't have to be fancy. Nothing wrong with it. I mean, there's absolutely nothing wrong with it. But we're just, we're just rustic. And I didn't say rusty. <laughs> we're not corroded. Right? It's kind of rustic, praise the Lord. So that's just the way we are. That's how we are, and that's how we live. And we're happy. That's how, that's how we're comfortable. And that's how God wants us to be. You might not be comfortable in that. We are. That's how we, we like it this way. Praise the Lord. I know, I know, I know. It's really not a dump, it's just, it's kind of like a landfill. No, it's, it's, it's none of that. I mean, it's nice. I'm not saying it's, you know, but it's, it's just us, praise the Lord. Cast not away, therefore, your confidence. I get off on these Sally trails and I get all messed up. Cast not away, therefore, your confidence, which has great recompense of reward. For ye have need of patience, that after ye have done the will of God, ye might receive the promise. Cast not away your confidence. Confidence is faith. It's all it is. It's faith in your spirit, and it links to a reward that comes from the promises of God, from the word of God. See, the, the mind just has to be renewed or disciplined to not get in the way, to not keep you from having confidence in what God's promise says. Exactly. Exercising faith, in other words. All right, Mark chapter 11, verses 23 and 24. Verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, shall not doubt in his heart, or in his spirit, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass. He shall have whatever he says. Therefore I say unto you, What things soever you desire, when you pray, believe that you got them, and you will have them. Believe that it's already there, and you're declaring it, makes it manifest. Now you're operating like your dad. Now you're functioning like your father. The way you were designed to operate. The reason you were born again, so that you could operate. See, we're, we, we do a lot of things. We pray, oh God, please. It's, it's wasted effort. It's actually unbelief. 
God has already placed in us the all things. We've already looked and see where in the beginning, when he spoke, it, where did it come? It came from him. He didn't call it in from some distant planet somewhere because there weren't any. He called it out of himself. And he has placed himself in you. So that you would do the same thing. Because that's all Jesus was doing all the time he was here. For at least for the three and a half years of his ministry. I only do what I see my father do. I only say what I hear my father say. It's not me, but it's the father that's in me. He does the work. Praise the Lord. See, the unrenewed mind has a, has a hard time understanding <clears throat> that you can have what you say. You know, there's ministries, and I know everybody, you know, you've got to take on. There's the Word of Faith ministry, and this, you know, look, that's, I don't care about any of that, really. You can call it what you want to call it. You can think of it as however you want to think of it. I'm just saying this is what the Word of God says, and I don't, I don't care about the rest of it. I don't care how other people may try to manipulate it or use it to their advantage or, or, or to control people. That's not my agenda here. I'm just saying that this is what the Word of God says. And we make it about everything else. I mean, we, we get so hung up on stuff that has so little to do with God's purpose and plan for our lives. We're so busy nitpicking, trying to manipulate and control people and get people to do certain things and do things the way I want it. And so, well, you know, well, you know, that's what the word of God says. If you don't do it, you're, God's going to get you and, you know, it's going to really be bad. And that's just, you don't have to. If God is for you, who can be against you? Praise the Lord. All right, Mark chapter 4, verse 11 through 14. He said unto them, Unto you it is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God. Now, I was taught on the kingdom Wednesday night. And just kind of, I mean, I was just kind of easing into this, but even then, I, I know it's, it's not comfortable, but if we're not going to address the realities of this, we're just playing church. You know, we're just messing around waiting for a revival so we can all feel good for a week or two. This will keep you till Jesus comes. And it'll, it'll not just keep you, it will bless you. Yes. It'll keep you from fear. It'll keep you from doubt. It'll keep you from anxiety and, and stress over all the normal stuff, the tribulations that we deal with in life. Yeah. It'll give you peace. Peace that passes understanding, the understanding of the natural man. He said unto them, unto you it's given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God, but unto them that are without, all these things are done in parables. So he tells stories because it's, these things are for us. Believers. People that believe in the resurrection. Believe that they are born from above. Amen? That seeing they may see and not perceive. Talking about the unbeliever. And hearing they may hear and not understand. Lest at any time they should be converted and their sins should be forgiven them. He said unto them, Know ye not this parable? How then will you know all parables? In other words, if you can understand this parable, you can understand every parable that Jesus tells. Sometimes they, they are a bit confusing because we don't understand the audience that he's speaking to and the culture and so on and so forth. But that's what he's saying here. If you can understand this, you'll understand them all because it's the key. The sower sows the word. From Genesis 1 till Jesus raptures us out of here, that's how we live. How did you get born again? You believed in your heart. You confessed with your mouth. You sowed the word. I believe in Jesus. You, you spoke what you believe. And instantaneously, one of the, great, oh, the greatest miracles that could ever happen, you got born again. You became a child of God. 
and everything. Jesus said it to the Galatians. He said, having begun in the spirit, are you so foolish now that you think you can do this in the flesh? Having started out this way, why are we doing everything else but that? Why are we laboring and struggling to be better and nicer? And nothing wrong with any of that stuff. But that's more of a social issue than it is a religious or spiritual issue. Well, I should say it is more of a social or religious issue than it is a spiritual issue. Because as far as God's concerned, just like all the promises having been given to us, we are already the righteousness of God in Christ, and nothing you ever do is going to make you more righteous. Praise the Lord. So the sower sows the word. Praise God. All right, drop down to verse 30 through 32, same chapter here in verse 4, or chapter 4, I should say. So the sower sows the word, and, and he's going on, and he goes on, and he talks more about that, and then he says here, he said, whereunto shall we liken the kingdom of God? Where is the kingdom of God? He's with you, but he shall be in you. He was with the disciples, but after the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, he said, I'm sending back the comforter, and he will be in you. The kingdom of God will be in you. So the kingdom, if you're born again, the kingdom of God is in you. That's why he says, seek first the kingdom of God. In other words, seek the inside, the, the spirit man. Don't be looking for all the external, the sense realm stuff. It's all right here. So seek first the kingdom of God, and all the stuff will happen. It, 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 it will be provided. But you can't get it out here. You've got to get it from in here, from the kingdom, from where the kingdom resides. Amen. Praise the Lord. So where, where shall, we, there, shall we liken the kingdom of God? Or with what comparison shall we compare it? The kingdom of God is like a grain of a mustard seed, which when it is sown in the earth, it's less than all the seeds that be in the earth. But when it's sown, so how does the kingdom of God work? I speak a word. It's a word. It's just words. It's just verbiage. What the, he what the heck is that? I mean, that doesn't mean anything, does it? I mean, it's just language. Everybody talks. It's just a little thing. It's just a word. It's not me out here groaning and grunting and straining under the weight of my faith and, and all that i got to have and want to have. No, it's just I'm speaking something in agreement right. with God. So I'm sowing the word. Amen. What happens? It grows up. It matures. It develops. And it becomes greater than all of the natural. Okay? It's overcoming natural law. This Spiritual reality is overcoming the natural stuff. So that the fowls of the air can lodge under the shadow of it. Now it's a metaphor, obviously, the, the, you know, the, the mustard seed and the plant is just a metaphor for the world and for the spirit realm. So when I speak the word of God out of the kingdom, out of my spirit man, it dominates the natural. It grows up to where it becomes greater than anybody could imagine. Because it's just a word for crying out loud. But it's not just a word. It's a release of the kingdom. It's an acknowledging of God's truth. It's called faith. It's confidence that what God says will come to pass. Praise the Lord. There's no lack of in the kingdom of God. Didn't he say, I'll give you all things? He gave us all things by giving us the kingdom. Because in it are all things. And the kingdom's in you. And as I said before, as a man thinketh in his spirit, so is he. Think defeated. Think overcome. Think can't do it. Think God won't help me. God won't. Do. That's what you get. Because what you're thinking is what you're going to say, and what you say dominates. That's why your mind has to be renewed to the Word of God. That's why we have stuff all over our house. Because I have a tendency to think. And I get in trouble every time I do it. Because I think I can come up with an answer for something I was never intended or equipped to come up with. Praise the Lord. I'm sorry. But it's true, and it's true of most of you, too. Yes. But if I can look to the Word of God 
and put my mind on hold, God can do the miraculous. I've seen him do it. We had a, we had a guy 40-some years old when we pastored in Ankeny. What was his name? Um, gosh, I can't remember. Anyway, he was in a, he was in a home for uh, people with mental uh, issues. He had the mind of like a, about a 10-year-old or something, maybe less than that. Took him fishing a few times. He was just like a little kid. It was just like, he was 45. He was older than I was at the time. You all might know the family. Yeah, I can't think of his name now for the life of me. But anyway, that's beside the point. We were in a church service. And, of course, we were always talking about the Holy Spirit and, you know, God doing this and doing that and the other thing. And I kind of thought, well, he, you know, he's here. but Because we'd go get him every Sunday and bring him to church and take him home. And I didn't think he really locked in on anything that was being said. I thought he was there for the treats or food or whatever, you know, or the fishing trips. But, but that's how naive I was about how the Spirit of God can work. Because, see, his spirit was no more, no different than anybody else's spirit. It was just his physical part of him was not, didn't have it all together. So we gave an altar call. I don't know what, even what it was all about. He got up and came forward, laid hands on him. He started speaking in tongues. I mean, so beautifully. Now, this guy couldn't make it up, I'm telling you. He didn't have the ability or the, the knowledge or even the way of connecting that way. It just happened. And we later baptized him. He's since deceased. But that told me more about God and his presence than anything. He was the last person I thought. And I thought when he got up and came up, he was just feeling... Like, you know, I'm going to do what other people are doing or something, you know. No, the Spirit of God was drawing him, and he responded, and immediately God filled him with the Holy Spirit. Amen. See, once, once you get beyond what your senses can perceive or that your mind can reason out, you're in the Spirit. Praise the Lord. Now, I'm going to see that guy in heaven. And he's got the mind of Christ. He knows more than y'all. I mean, more than any of us. He was the least of us. But he's become the head. Praise the Lord. That's how our God works. He chooses the foolish things of this world. That's most of us. You don't have to have a mental deficiency or anything else to be the least. I mean, especially if you take the world way of looking at things. And yet, God calls us the head. We, we talk about those scriptures with the head, not the tail, uh, and all those things. But that's a reality that exists right now. We are that in Christ. Hallelujah. Romans 14, verse 17. And we have to really, we've got to make ourselves do this. We've got to discipline ourselves. However that works for you. It may not be the way it does for me. But for me, i got to have visual stuff to remind me all the time. Or it's just too easy for me to get off in my own little warped way of thinking and and everything gets fouled up. For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness, peace, joy, and the Holy Ghost. Praise the Lord. The kingdom, see, there's no turmoil in the kingdom. What did Jesus say before? He was talking about, oh, you know, you're, you're worried about what you're going to eat, worried about what you're going to wear. Worried about where you're going to live. He said, the lilies, they, they don't toil, they don't spin, but they're, they're beautiful. They, they're dressed perfectly. Right? The birds, they're not worried about where they're going to eat. They just come to my house. Praise the Lord. God just feeds them. How much more will your heavenly Father give you the kingdom? See, 
You don't need, you just need peace, joy, and the Holy Spirit, your righteousness, and out of that kingdom, God says, I'll give you all things by pursuing the internal, the God that's in you, instead of the stuff that's out here, God can give you more than enough, more than you could ever imagine. Hebrews 11, verses 1 through 3. Praise the Lord. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good report. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Praise the Lord. He doesn't write it this way to confuse us or confound us, but if you, if you think in agreement with the Spirit, this makes perfect sense. It agrees with everything we were talking about here this morning. It's how God operates. It's how he works. And that's how we're supposed to work. You begin to see the unseen reality. Amen? Instead of seeing like Tammy and Dan, instead of seeing a pile of ashes and what was their house, they begin to see a new home a restored home, a better home. That's faith. And you know what happens? You can have peace. You're not all agitated and freaking out and, oh, my God, what are we going to do? Where are we going to stay? How are we going to do this? How, what's going to happen now? God will supply all your needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus if you keep him the focus. And you can be in peace, peace that the world cannot understand have no way of comprehending. See, faith dominates what's in the natural. That's what I've said in a bunch of different ways here this morning. But confidence in God will dominate whatever it is you're facing, whatever it is you're dealing with. God used his faith to create the world. Abraham used his faith to become the father of nations. Jesus used his faith to heal the sick, to feed the hungry, to raise the dead. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 13 through 18. We're about done. 2 Corinthians 4, 13 through 18. And I hope, you know, this just doesn't become another Sunday sermon. But I hope you'll actually meditate on this. Make it a purpose. Because it is your purpose. We having the same spirit of faith according as it is written, I believe, and therefore have I spoken. We also believe, and therefore we speak. The result of believing is speaking. Knowing that he which raised up the Lord Jesus shall raise up us also by Jesus and shall present us with you. For all things are for your sakes, that the abundant grace might through the thanksgiving of many redound to the glory of God. For which cause we faint not, but through our, though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed every day. My spirit will be as strong the day I leave this body as it was the day I got born again. Praise the Lord. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. For which cause we faint not, but through, though our outward man perish, it's temporal. The inner man is new every day. It's eternal. Right? Seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. You can see this. And if you've got eyes, you can see... It's perishing. It's been perishing since it came on the planet. From the moment of birth, we begin to die. But what's inside there? It's eternal. You can't see it, but it's never going to die. Praise God. Amen. 
See, temporal just simply means subject to change. So whatever symptoms, whatever natural things are out, they're all subject to change. And you know they'll change because good things happen, then bad things happen, or bad things happen, then good things happen. And I mean, just that's the nature of the natural realm. It's changing. It's subject to change. The eternal is fixed. It's the same yesterday, today, and forever because it's every day. What we call future, what we call past is just now. That's why, I mean, we're not going to go to heaven and live a long, really, really long time. We're going to go to heaven and never die. We're just, there just won't be any awareness of time. It'll always be now. In fact, we're not even going to spend a whole lot of time in heaven. We just go in there for a big feast and a party, like it's 1999, and then we're coming back here on a renewed earth, a, a, a recreated, beautiful, perfect earth. Jesus, God, the Word is the same yesterday, today, and forever. It's timeless. It's fixed. It's forever settled in heaven. We settle it here by declaring it, speaking it. The kingdom expands. All right, last scripture. First John chapter 5, verses 4 through 15. Back to where we began. First John 5, 4 through 15. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. This is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Who is he that overcometh the world? But he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. This is he that came by water and blood, even Jesus Christ, not by water only, but by water and blood. And it is the Spirit that beareth witness, because the Spirit is truth. For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy, Holy Ghost. And these three are one. The Shema. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. Praise the Lord. You got Jesus, you, Christ in you, the hope of glory. You have the Spirit of God in you. You have God who said, I'll never leave you or forsake you. You don't have, it's not crowded. You got one. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And there are three that bear record in the earth, the spirit, the water, the blood. These three are agree in one. If we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater. This is the witness of God, which he hath testified of his Son. He that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself, the Spirit. He that believeth not God hath made him a liar, because he believeth not the record that God gave of his Son. And this is the record that God hath given to us, eternal life. And this life is in his Son. He that hath the Son hath life, and he that hath not the Son hath not life. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life, God life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. And this is the confidence, this is the faith that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will or his word, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, Whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desired of him. If you confess anything that's in this word, then you know that you're confessing the will of God. That's the will of God. If it's the will of God, by his stripes you're healed. He wants you to prosper. No weapon formed against you can prosper. Every tongue that rises in judgment against you, you condemn. Amen. You're the head, not the tail, above and not beneath Bless going in, bless coming out, on and on and on, whatever, whatever it might be. We have confidence that God hears it because it's his word, it's his will. And if he hears me, and he always hears his will, then I have it. Whatever it is that I'm declaring, whatever it is I'm agreeing with God about, whatever it is I have confidence in God over, that's faith. It's automatic. I got it. Praise the Lord. So, okay, so we've got to operate the same way God operates. We operate 
with his power, with his anointing, with his faith, and with his love. He's already done everything. It's the faith of Jesus Christ. It isn't even our faith. We just have confidence in him, in his faith, in his love, in his anointing. We're his children. We're joint heirs with Jesus. God is our Father. And we have been given his ability. Whoa. That's what he said. He has given us power. He's given us authority. He's given us the same ability that he operated in. He gave us his word. It's just words on this page, but the moment I speak it, it's life. It becomes spirit, and it becomes life. And spirit life dominates natural life. So when I speak the spirit into this realm, the laws of this realm are suspended because now we have eternal words that are fixed in heaven, that are settled in heaven, and they dominate everything here because everything here came from there. Does that make sense? Yes. Praise the Lord. So we are his children. We're joint heirs with Christ. Everything he has, we have. We have the ability that he has. Amen. Amen. As he is, so are we in this world. Not as he was, as he is. All, all power is given to him. He's seated at the right hand of God. All power is his. And as he is, so are we in this present world. Can you see how, how lame this is that we, this is, I, I don't mean, mean to be rude, but how just superfluous all this religious stuff is? Because it's not producing anything other than a lot of guilt and shame. This will rock your world. Amen. Amen. This will turn the world upside down. Yes. This will do what the disciples did in the book of Acts. Yes. This is what it's supposed to do. It's supposed to give people hope. It's supposed to give people not a fear of God, but a, uh, you know, an affection for God. He's not mad at you. He was really, well, I almost said it. He was really ticked off. But he took it all out on Jesus. No more, not any anger left in him for us. Nothing but love. Nothing but acceptance. Why, do we, why wouldn't you want to serve that God? And I don't mean serve him in drudgery. I mean just to acknowledge him. I mean, it just doesn't make sense. Religion has made this so confusing and frightening that people are afraid of God. The last thing in the world that he wanted. The worst people in the world were drawn to Jesus. The biggest sinners, the biggest screw-ups, the biggest failures. They were drawn to him. They weren't afraid of him. It was the religious people that had a problem. The hypocrites, the white and sepulchers, the two-faced jerks that didn't want to enter into the kingdom that we're talking about here. And because they wouldn't, they wouldn't let anybody else. Right. By God's grace and power, power of the Holy Spirit, the Word of God can do the same thing, the exact same thing for you that it did for Jesus. If it, if it can't, then this is all a lie, and we just will get to the bar and see how much we can consume because we're, we're in trouble. It'll overcome the world. And it'll give you the victory, praise the Lord. In any situation, over every circumstance, over every tribulation, because you are a child of God. You've got his DNA. You can be just like him in this earth, just the same as Jesus said. When you see me, you've seen the Father. That's for all of us. We're heirs and joint heirs. We should be able to say that to people. Show me the Father. What do you think? Praise the Lord. Look in the mirror. He said, I see nothing but Christ and him crucified. Everywhere I look, I just see Jesus. 
crucified, raised up in power. Amen. Amen. Give your father a hand. This Praise, God. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. Amen. God bless all of you. Appreciate your patience this morning. Have a great Father's Day. And just remember, Father of Fathers is on your side. Praise the Lord. You're dismissed in Jesus' name. Thomas, that was the man's name. I just, Sally just remembered it. I know.